I'd like to now invite to the stage uh, Mark Lapping from Aquapack Polymers. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm definitely looking for partners, so I'll get my pitch in early at this speed dating. So I'm Mark Lapping, and uh, CEO of Aquapack Polymers. I'm going to start with a medical update. So apologies from Dr. John Williams, who was meant to be here delivering this uh, presentation. Uh, unfortunately for John, sadly for John, he's had a, a nasty bout of pneumonia, but I'm pleased to say he's uh, fully recovering now. So you have a poor substitute. So follow-ups will be done by John, but I will do my best to deliver uh, why we wanted to be here and talk to you all and looking for our partnerships. So first, first of all, what do we do? Aquapack is, we're PVOH processing specialists. We're a compounder. We've taken polyvinyl alcohol in its raw form, and we do something creative with it that creates high functionality, but all the end-of-life benefits of polyvinyl alcohol. At the moment, it's still petro-derived, which isn't a great start at a bioconference, but I'll explain to you why I'm here, because we're on the route to bio, and that's hence the need for collaboration. What we're, what we're up to at Aquapack here is we're developing biohydroxy polymers that mimic PVOH, so very close in terms of the chemistry, uh, but from renewable resources. And our mission is to produce a scalable bio-PVOH. And that's the journey we're on right now. But, but first, a bit about what we do. So we have, uh, as I said, we're a compound. As I said, we're a compounder. We we've got a um, 5,000 square meter plant in Birmingham, in the centre of the UK. Uh, we've got two compounding lines in there. So currently, we have about 12,000 tons of compounding capacity where we make pellets and sell them pretty much into the, the packaging supply chain, but also to some consumer goods companies for products um, like sanitary pads, which we're, we're in at the moment. Um, and there could be many more collaborations, but right now our focus is in areas where the high functionality but the benefits of end of life play out for our polymer. So... Functionality is the core of what we do. There's no value in us looking to replace or replicate existing polymers if we are asking people to take a drop in terms of the capability and functionality of the product. So what attracted me to Aquapack is when you look at, and I came out of the packaging industry, when you look at the functionality on the left-hand side of this slide, a lot of the attributes you look for in multiple polymers are in one polymer. So it's very high barrier in terms of oxygen barrier, equivalent or even better than EVOH at low relative humidity. It's very high barrier to oil, fat, grease, um, and petro. Kit 12, for those of you from the packaging industry understand, it's the higher barriers you can get. It has a strength three and a half times that of HDPE, so excellent tensiles. Um, on the other side, it is a hydrophilic. It's designed to break down in the presence of water. So you would need to add something to it, which you can do through a coating or another material, if you want a high um, MVTR or, PV or, or WVTR. But its end-of-life benefits are a myriad. And as you can see there, its water solubility gives you so many options. It's compatible with uh, anaerobic digestion, paper recycling, where it will dissolve out, leaving all the fiber to be recovered. Um, it also, it, it, with composting, and it breaks, it breaks down in the natural environment and will literally leave no trace. Hence, it goes around the polyvinyl, base polyvinyl alcohol goes around a lot of products that we know well, like detergent tablets. So it's a combination of punct functionality and multiple end of lives of what we're offering. And our niche in polyvinyl alcohol is the way that we reactively compound the products. The mixture of the chemistry and the reactive compounding process gives us higher, higher functionality than standard polyvinyl alcohol and the ability to thermally process it, which is what is critical to the packaging industry. So you can end up making everyday consumer products. It's very scalable. You can thermally process it. We're focused on blown film, either as a barrier layer, for instance, instead of EVOH, or coating it directly onto paper where you want high barriers on that paper. You could equally, it has strong affiliation, as I've been having some conversations today with cellulosics, nanocellulosics, or, or pulp. 
Um, but what that means is that end of life, it will separate and it will leaving you all the fiber which can be recovered and recycled. And the, our, our product, Hydropol, the polyvinyl alcohol, passes harmlessly through the effluent plant where it will fully biodegrade. So scalability is the core of what we do, using it in standard products. So effectively, you can design in the circularity that everyone's looking for at, at end of life without the jeopardy of losing any functionality in life. So just a summary of what its benefits are. I've mentioned the functionality um, at the top there for a hydrophilic, it's extremely high. The raw material source, as I said at the moment, it's petro, but we also have high affiliation with, with biomaterials. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, but that means that we can combine it with bioproducts and get um, majority bioproducts right now, but look, we're looking for a 100% solution as well, as I've mentioned. And then you've got all those end of life benefits on that checklist. So in terms of the journey we're on, uh, BioPVOH does exist or can exist and has existed in, in pilot or development scale, but we're looking to make that into a far greater scale. And the route to that has been through BioVam. And that means you've still got a three-step process to making polyvinyl alcohol. The reason that hasn't taken off is literally scale and cost. So by a van, you can do it, but because it, it only replicates or mimics the existing process and it's extremely expensive, no one is doing it. So we've looked at that and said, right, how can we take the monomer to the polymer and then use that in our compounding process to give us the bio source we want? And we see a big gap in terms of there not being any bio PVOH out in the market. So we've come up with a two-step process from a biomass. Uh, if any of you want to talk to, you, talk to me about that later, I can tell you what biomass source that is. Um, but it's a readily available non-food um, biomass that we can use in this process. And that's where we're looking for partners to, to work through the development cycle and then ultimately the industrial scale up of this product. So right now, this two-stage process um, we have, we have created, it's basically we're creating a, a family of biohydroxypolymers. Um, we've looked and characterized a number. We have taken one through to uh, kilogram, kilogram scale, sorry, one through to kilogram scale, at the, and we'll be looking at going in ton scale, and the other, the other members of that family we'll be looking at bringing online at the end of this year and in 2024. I mentioned that the, we, we, can, we ultimately will use these biohydroxy polymers in, in our, as our raw material feedstock instead of a petro-based one. So we will carry on developing our business with the current feedstock, and then we'll literally look to substitute it because it will mimic the same characteristics as all the development work we've done so far. But in the meantime, we still are able to develop, as I've said, with other bio, biopolymers or biomaterials through existing scalable sources like it could be in a coex or it could be in a compound, um, both of which are in development or actually in, in commercialization with us right now. But ultimately, we want, we want to have that mimicking biosource PVOH as a polymer, which we can compound and turn into our own biohydropole version and then put that with um, other biosource materials. So as I said, we've scaled this um, in kilos, and we're moving into tons for the first of these of these biopolymers, uh, and the rest will follow at the end of this year. Um, we see this as a missing link in the supply chain, not having a bio source of, of this wonderful polymer with all its great functional characteristics of PVOH. And we're now look, actively looking for people that we can work alongside to take us through that lab development stage into the industrial scale up of, of the polymer. So hopefully some of that resonated with some of you. We have, we're very used to collaboration. We work with 12 UK universities. We work with a whole host of development centers, both across Europe, but also in other parts of the world. And really we're looking for partners who have, where, where what I've said here, what we're trying to do on our journey in terms of finding an alternative raw material, bio raw material, material resource resonates with your own capabilities. And if it does, I'd be delighted to talk to you and then hand you over to John Williams, who can have a much more detailed conversation with about how we could actually do that. But thank you very much for your attention, and I hope some of that was interesting. Thank you.